Here comes the sun, the depths of Satan, the church at Taratira. And then there was John Wycliffe, who in the year 1320 translated the Holy Bible into the language of the people. He preached in the English countryside, teaching the distinctive doctrines of the Bible, salvation through faith in Christ alone, and the sole infallibility of the scriptures. He turned the minds of men from the Pope and from the Church of Rome to the Word of God. And before the Church could reach him, he died. But the Church would not be satisfied while his body rested quietly in the grave awaiting the resurrection. More than forty years after his death, by the decree of the Council of Constance, his bones were exhumed and publicly burned, and the ashes were thrown into a neighboring brook. But the brook, says one writer, conveyed his ashes into Avon, Avon into Severn, Severn into the narrow seas, they into the main ocean. And thus the ashes of Wycliffe are the emblem of his doctrine, which now is dispersed all the world over. It's taken from the Great Controversy, page 96. I gave her space to repent, the Bible says, and she repented not. And who can forget John Huss, who lived around 1360. Huss was a priest who read the writings of Wycliffe and believed them to be true. He taught that the precepts of Scripture conveyed through the understanding are to rule the conscience, in other words, God speaking in the Bible, and not the church speaking through the priesthood, is the one infallible guide. And for believing that he that he was called before the church and there declared a heretic. He died singing, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And so continued his voice until it was silenced forever. I gave her space to repent, and she repented not with the words of Jesus to the church at Tyratira. And then there was William Tyndall, while Luther was opening a closed Bible to the people of Germany, Tyndall was impelled by the Spirit of God to do the same thing for England. Wycliffe's Bible had been translated from the Latin text, which contained many errors. It had never been printed, and the cost of manuscript copies was so great that but few wealthy men or nobles could procure it. And furthermore, being strictly prescribed by the Church, it had a comparatively narrow circulation. In 1516, a year before the appearance of Luther's theses, Erasmus had published his Greek and Latin version of the New Testament. Now for the first time the Word of God was printed in the original tongue. In this work many errors of former versions were corrected and the sense was more clearly rendered. It led many among the educated classes to a better knowledge of the truth and gave a new impetus to the work of reform. But the common people were still to a great extent debarred from God's word. Tyndall was to complete the work of Wycliffe in giving the Bible to his countrymen. And what can we say of Martin Luther, who in 1517 nailed his 95 theses to the church door, thus breaking the back of the papacy? The year 1517 marks the beginning of a new era for the church and the world. Martin Luther gave the first blow of the Reformation. He firmly declared that Christians should receive no other doctrines except those which rest only on the authority of the Word of God. He fearlessly attacked the indulgences in the church and, and sought reform here. His famous words still speak to us today. He said, unless I'm convinced by the testimony of Scripture or by the clearest reasoning, unless I'm persuaded by the means of the passages I have quoted, and unless they thus render my conscience bound by the word of God, I cannot and will not retract, for it is unsafe for a Christian to speak against his conscience. Here I stand. I can do no other. May God help me. Amen. The Dark Ages for this world and for the people of God were to last 1,260 years. Long time. In the church at Pergamos we studied 
that the apostasy of the bishops reached its height in the year 538 when the Pope was named the head of all churches. The oppressive papal rule was to last for 1,260 years. The man of sin was to rule for this long period of time before his rule would be broken. And it was in the year 1798, during the Napoleonic Wars, the French general Louis Alexander Berthier marched his troops into the city of Rome and captured the then reigning Pope, Pope Pius VI, and put him in prison, thus giving the papacy a deadly wound. And this event fulfilled the 1,260 years of papal suppression. This is a time period of the church at Taratira. The year 1798 brought to an end the Dark Ages and the dawn of a new tomorrow. Verse 22 of Revelation continues the history of Taratira. Revelation 2 verse 22 says this, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Verse 24 says, But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Taratira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. And this woman, Jezebel, the Bible says, reached the full depths of Satan. She was involved in whoredoms and witchcrafts, and the papal church that followed Jezebel's path by resorting to astrology and spiritualism as part of her worship. 2 Kings 9.22 This church was also involved in the worship of images and relics. This was a gradual change, but it was so firmly established in the church that by A.D. 787, the Second General Council of Nicaea was called for this very purpose. Oh yes, the images were at first introduced not to be worshipped, but to give instruction to those who could not read. The result was that they ended in turning the people from the Creator to that which was created. The second commandment, forbidding image worship, was eliminated from the Ten Commandments by the Catholic Church, and the Tenth Commandment was divided in order to, to preserve the number. The Fourth Commandment, of course, was also trampled during this period of time. The Sabbath Commandment was transferred to the first day of the week, a day which has absolutely no scriptural backing. Surely the depths of Satan were reached during the period of the Taratiran church.